It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Yes, today, a special game. We come to the end of our round robin tournament. The final three middle schools in this year's competition are battling it out to see which two of them go on to buy for the county championship later this month. Let's find out a little bit about the teams later, but we'll introduce them to you. But for those of you joining us for the first time, Science Bowl, this is in our 36th year. We test scientific literacy among the students in Prince George's schools, elementary and middle. We normally have them in the studio here, but the pandemic is keeping them at home. So we keep our, our original categories of zoo parade, read things, body systems, let's get physical, science potpourri, and dateline science with five 15 and 25 point questions in each one, going from easy to relatively difficult to the hardest of them all. 50 points just for showing up, so no penalties for incorrect answers. So let's now meet one of the two teams vying today and let's say hello to Robert Goddard Middle School and their captain, Teddy. Hey, Teddy, wave to everybody at home if you would. Teddy is joined by today, Sylvie. Hey, Sylvie. And Shawford is with us as well. Shawford, good to have you on the team, running after your, the fearsome threesome there. All right, let's get to the game. Green things, we have a five, a 15, and a 25-point question. Here's your five-point question. Let's get started. The tallest structure in Tokyo and the second tallest structure in the whole world was featured in much of the Olympics coverage this past summer. Even though the structure has no branches or roots or leaves, the Japanese have called the tower the sky what? Tree. <laughs> it is the sky tree. That is exactly right. Yes, the iconic image of, this, of the Olympics. 15 points in green things. While the layer of vegetation on the forest floor is known as the understory, the vegetation at the tops of the trees is the overstory, or this term. The canopy? That's what I yeah, think, Yeah, I do, canopy. Canopy is perfect, yes, indeed. Last question in the green things category. Good, you're two for two. Let's go three for three. Instead of storing asparagus with the other vegetables in the refrigerator, cut off the ends and stand up the stalks in a glass of water. The water will then rise up this vascular tissue in the stem and keep the asparagus fresh for days. Uh, Teddy, what do you think? Uh, uh, this vascular tissue, right? Um, what color? I don't know. I can't. Uh, Teddy, what do you think? I don't know. Okay, the, the, the correct answer here is the xylem, X-Y-L-E-M. Yeah. Same thing that draws water up into a flower. If you have cut flowers, snip off the bottom, put them in some water, add a little glucose, a little sugar, and you'll have them for lots of days there. Let's go to the zoo for five points. A yellow-bellied sapsucker is one of these birds that makes a lot of noise getting to the sap. A uh, woodpecker? Sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a woodpecker. It is indeed a woodpecker. I like the name, yellow-bellied sapsucker. Let's go to 15 points. One Atari video game from the 1980s was called Centipede. A more challenging one came out later, named for this similar arthropod, whose name means a thousand legs. Millipede. Millipede. Millipede is correct, yes, indeed. Let's show you a picture for the 25-point question in Zoo Parade. Let's have a look. You know, too many of these horseshoe crabs are being captured lately because their blood is special. It can detect even small amounts of dangerous bacteria and thus is used in the manufacture of practically all vaccines and other drugs that we use. The blood of these crabs 
contains a pigment called hemocyanin, H-E-M-O-C-Y-A-N-I-N. Multiple choice, that pigment hemocyanin makes horseshoe blood yellow, green, blue, or red? Blue. Blue. Blue is right. After, oh, I, in unison, I like that answer. Good. Body assistant for five points. The only parts of your body that have no blood vessels are the cartilage in your ears and nose and this part of your eye. The, the, is it the iris? Eyelid. Teddy, is that your answer? Uh, let's go with iris. Uh, correct answer is the window in the front, the cornea. The cornea has no blood vessels, which is why it can be easily donated upon one's death and then transplanted into someone else without any fear of rejection. For 15 points in body systems, according to Greek mythology, Zeus was so angry at Prometheus for discovering fire that he chained him to a mountain and sent an eagle to eat this internal organ that even in real life can grow back or regenerate. Liver. 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 Oh. Liver. Liver. Uh, yeah, liver sounds right. Liver is correct. Yes, indeed. So it would grow back, and that eagle would keep coming back and would torment Prometheus again and again and again for 25 points in body systems. A new study has found that 80% of fast foods contain phthalates, spelled with a silent P, P-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S, phthalates. Chemicals used in softening plastics and thought to cause damage to this E-initialed body system. Esophagus. Mm. Well, it's a body system. So, not body system. Well, would the esophagus be considered a body system? Anything. Uh, Teddy, what you got? Esophagus? Uh, actually, it's the endocrine system, oh, the endocrine. system that produces your hormones, like the pituitary gland and the adrenal and the thyroid, all part of the endocrine system. All right. 130 points. All right. A decent first round there. All right, Robert Goddard, we'll give you a little bit of break. We'll bring you back, talk to you, and you can go get them in the second half. I know you can do it. Nice work. It is now time to meet the team from Martin Luther King Jr. And would you please say hello to their Captain Martin. Martin, have you waved everybody, please, young man? Thank you. Bailey's with us, too. Hey, Bailey. Welcome back. And Kelvin is here, too. Kelvin is ready and willing and able to participate today and show us all that he knows. All right, guys, let's get started with your green things question, a five-pointer. Here we go. 10% of all the flowering plants on our planet are these D, as in David, these D initial flowers that usually have white petals, and famously, one grew out of the head of a Dr. Seuss character named Maisie. Daisy. 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 That's right. The daisy on top of Maisie's head. Good answer. Five points for 15 points. A new book called The Glitter in Green is all about these tiny avians that live almost entirely on the nectar from flowers. Hummingbirds? I think it's hummingbirds. Hummingbirds? It is hummingbirds. Yes, sir, Martin. 25 points is a visual question. The big one in this category, let's have a look at the picture, if you would, please. This may not be your favorite vegetable. You know, there's green cauliflower, the typical white cauliflower, and then there's this purple cauliflower, which may be the healthiest of them all. Since the purple anthocyanin pigments can attack free radicals in your body because the pigments contain these, the kinds of chemicals that attack free radicals antioxidants yeah. i mean blueberries yeah purple. i know that's I what I'm antioxidants. antioxidants it is antioxidants tough question and you got it one wonderful job let's go to the zoo scientists have found that the tiny hairs all over the abdomen of bees 
cuts down on this force when their body parts rub against each other as they buzz flowers all day long. Friction? Friction, absolutely right. There's a lot of friction in there, and those tiny hairs make it so that uh, the bees don't catch fire. <laughs> it would never be that bad. Good answer. 15 points, multiple choice. If you were interested in ichthyology, would you be happy to find in your backyard swimming pool a duck, a daddy long legs, or a minnow? Minnow. Ichthyology is the study of fish, so it would be minnow. Minnow? Minnow is correct. Yes, sir. For 25 points, I have another visual for you. Would you please look at this picture? Some of you may have remembered reading it last year in the summer. Rosiette spoonbills, that's what you're looking at, which look like a Dr. Seuss creation and live in the tropics, turned up here in Washington this past summer. They were a huge hit. They move their bills, which are shaped like spoons, back and forth to stir up creatures in the water by using what same effect that lets planes lift off the ground and a shower curtain get pulled into the shower stall. Um, it is the name of a particular know? effect. Um, please repeat the question. Those birds, those spoonbills, can move their bills back and forth to stir up creatures in the water. And they're able to do this, they're able to stir everything up by using what same effect, same physical effect, that lets a plane lift off the ground. And if you're standing in a shower and the shower is coming down on you, oftentimes the shower curtain will be drawn in to you. Name that effect. Levitational pull. Surface tension? Because they hit of like a running start. So I think Wait, it could be. What, what could it be? Say it. It's a running start. It's what they get like a plane. So what do you think? I was thinking. <laughs> Surface and, tension. And Bailey is right. Bailey is right because when you're taking off, the, the wind goes faster over the surface than underneath, and that provides lift. It is known as the Bernoulli effect. The Bernoulli effect was the right answer, right answer there. Let's go to the body systems. Signs at swimming pools often say, no long-term breath holding. That's because it can slow your heart rate and lead to an accumulation of carbon dioxide that can damage organs. And it can lead to a buildup of this gas that is associated with the bends, which occur if you surface too quickly from a depth. It's nitrogen. It's Absolutely nitrogen. Absolutely right. It is nitrogen, sometimes called nitrogen narcosis. Five points. Good. For 15 points. This is interesting. When you get up in the morning, you're about two centimeters taller than you were the night before because the discs between the vertebrae in your spine relax because this material that makes up the discs relaxes. Wait, the, the makes up the discs, you think it's cartilage? No, I think the cartilage would be what could be moved, but I don't know. What, Calvin, what do you think? Repeat. Can you repeat the question? Can you repeat the question, please? The material? that makes up the discs in your spine, the discs that separate the vertebrae. They relax during the night because those discs are made of this material. I think it's cartilage. Okay. Cartilage? It is cartilage, absolutely right. Your first instinct was correct, which oftentimes is. Let's do the 25 point question, the last one in your opening round. You can sprain an ankle or a wrist. But if you injure a muscle or the band of tissues that attaches a muscle to a bone, you've done this to it. Pulled, torn, pulled. It could be torn or pulled. Well, sprain isn't like a fracture, so I would think pulled. What do you think? It could be pulled or torn. Pulled, because it's injury. Okay. Pulled? Pulled. Uh, we will take that. We also would have accepted strained, strained instead of sprained. One, six, zero is your tally for the first half. You're sitting pretty. Take a little bit of a break. We'll bring you back in a few moments and uh, we can attack the last nine questions. Nice work, guys. 
It's time to welcome back that team from Robert Goddard, and let's find out about these young people here. If you have not listened or watched our show previously, when they've appeared, they're all great players here. Let's start with Sam. Sam is taking the place of Shawford here in the second half. Sam, you've been on our show before. What do you like about Science Bowl? Um, I just like how fun it is, just like, Learning science, which is one of my favorite subjects, more than you would normally in school. That's great. And I see you've got a personalized polo shirt on there with your name and the science bowl insignia. And Mr. Prez is your coach. And she is she is so involved. She is so into this. And I know how much she prepares you for this guy, for this particular competition. And we appreciate all that she does. And I know you appreciate her as well. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Sylvie. Hey, Sylvie. So is, are you still a little nervous or are you starting to relax a little bit now that you've gotten into the swing of things today? Um, I'm more relaxed, yeah. Because you, you look more relaxed too, so I'm happy about that. What do you want to do someday, Sylvia? You're very young yet, have you, but have you thought about a career? I don't really know what I want to do. I either want to be an artist or a scientist of some type. But I don't know anything specific. No, uh, I don't envy you because there's so many choices out there. It's hard to just kind of narrow it down. But you'll have a lot more experiences like this that'll hope. Hopefully, you'll 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 have an epiphany one day and say, "Boy, I really like that, and I'm good at it." Someone would pay me to do this. I think I want to do that. Let's talk to your teammate here. You're doing a nice job, Sylvie. Let's talk to uh, Teddy, our captain. Teddy, so do you feel the burden of being the captain here? Is it tougher than being just one of the players? Yeah, I, I definitely do. Um, making the final call uh, <laughs> is sometimes I know. challenging. It, I know. it is. The buck stops with you, as they say. But you're doing a great job here. And uh, yeah, just keep it up. What do you want to do someday, Teddy? What do you want to do someday, Teddy? Well, as we said before, I'm thinking about being a, a computer scientist, but I'm not sure still. So. Yeah. It's always good to have at least something out there, you know, and then be open to other suggestions. You'll do well. I know you will. All right, we have nine more questions for you, Robert Goddard, and let's get to the let's get physical. Here we go for five points. I want you to think hard before you dilute a can of frozen orange juice. It is in the form of a what? Uh before you dilute what? Concentrate, I think. It is in the form of... Uh, Teddy, you what you say? I'm... Did you say forward? anything? I, don't, I haven't said anything yet. I think it's okay. concentrate. I, I want you to that... think hard before you dilute a can of frozen orange juice. It is in the form of a what? Teddy, you choose, because I'm hearing a couple different things. Um, solid? Uh, actually, Sam got it right. It was the concentrate. You would have gotten your five points. Concentrated orange juice. Let's go to 15 points in bodies in, uh, let's get physical. It's a visual. Have a look, guys. It's been shown that water scavenger beetles can actually walk on the underside of water in a pond, just as Water striders like these can do on the top because water has this property. Buoyancy? Surface tension? Surface tension, I think. Uh, surface tension? It is surface tension, indeed. Thank you, Sylvie, for your assist on that, too, and Sam. Let's go to 25 points and let's get physical. While amateur astronomers have long thought they saw a man in the moon, it was just an optical illusion. The same as people who looked at this planet and saw what looked like man-made canals and even the face of Gandhi. Mars? Probably Mars. Mars. Yeah. It uh, is Mars. Mars. Good answer. Good answer. You got yourself 25 points. Let's go to Potpourri for five points. Multiple choice. An animal that is not on the endangered species list and thus not, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll start over. An animal that is not on the endangered species list and thus not likely headed for extinction anytime soon might still be considered to be viable, vestigial, or vulnerable. 
Uh, vulnerable. Yeah. Right. The next one. step up is vulnerable. That is correct. Yes, indeed, for five points. Good answer. Let's do the 15-point question. Street lights in Baltimore recently have a curious purple glow to them. They're not there to support the Ravens because purple is their color, but because there is a defect in the LEDs, kinds of light. What does LED stand for for 15 points? Light-emitting light diode. Light-emitting diode is correct. Good answer. 25 points. In Potpourri. The famed German astronomer Johannes Kepler wrote three laws of planetary motion. One of them was, in, in one of them, he was the first to state that planets, planets traveled in their paths around the sun in paths of this shape. Ovals? Um, maybe ellipsoids? Yeah. Uh, ellipses? Ellipses yeah. or ovals? Yeah, that's whatever you We will take that, about. yes. Ellipses or ovals, absolutely right. Good. Three more questions for you. Let's go to Dateline for five points. Olympic swimming gold medalist Caleb Dressel, a big fan of Legos, used a Lego model to explain how he swims this stroke, named for a Lepidopterous insect. Uh, butterfly. Yeah, butterfly. butterfly. That's right, he swam the butterfly. Let's do 15 points in Dateline. The powdered orange flavored drink known as Tang. You stirred it up in water and it made a kind of a fake orange juice. Tang has long been associated with NASA and space flight since John Glenn took it with him on his Mercury missions, and astronauts also took it in the next series of space flights, named for this third sign of the zodiac. Gemini. Gemini. Yes. That's right, Gemini, and then the next one was the Apollo. Well done, well done. Last question of the game, 25 points. If you are a Muppets fan, you'll know this. Dr. Honeydew's first name. He being the Muppets resident scientist, the one wearing glasses but having no eyes, and the inventor of such weird things as edible paper clips. Dr. Honeydew's first name is this B-initialed last name of the man who invented the gas burners used in science labs today. Bunsen. Bunsen. Yeah, Dr. Honeydew Bunsen is, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew is correct. Good round, guys. Two, six, zero. Great way to finish that game. All right, will that be enough with your previous match to get you into the final? It may happen. We're pulling for you. We'll see you all at the end of the game after we bring your other team in for their last nine questions. Good work. It's now time to bring back that team from Martin Luther King, and let's find out a little bit about the players here. They all have long histories on our show, and uh, I'm sure you've noticed that. They are smart as whips. They know their science backwards and forwards. Martin, it's always great to have you back. He's our captain. And Martin, uh, tell us, uh, are you going to take science into a career someday? Um, I might. I've thought about be, do, being an engineer for a while. Now I've thought of um, different things, like even graphic design, which I've actually been interested in. But I think I still kind of want to be an engineer. I don't know what type, maybe bio or chemistry, like chemistry engineer. I think that's one. Absolutely right. There's so many choices there. And with your science and your math skills, you're, you're going to do uh, well. The, the, the world is your oyster, young man. Always good to have you here. Let's go to Bailey. And Bailey, we were uh, talking to you earlier about uh, what you liked about the game here. And uh, how, do you, how do you prepare for this? I know you said your dad helps you out and you're curious about things on television. You read a lot. Can you, uh, would you say science is your favorite subject? And you don't have to say yes just because I'm here. I would not say science is actually my favorite subject. I would say that um, social studies is probably my favorite subject. And, you know, uh, uh, we all have to be uh, multi-talented and multi-dimensional. And, you know, if you're just a scientist, that's why they came up with STEAM, because it puts all those different dis disciplines together. 
You're playing such a nice game, Bailey. You always do. Let's talk to your other teammate, Kelvin. Kelvin, uh, tell me about uh, how you prepare for all of this. I know you told me before you've watched previous shows and you've been here. You know Mr. Z's style. You know the kinds of questions. So when you're reading something or watching something on TV, do you ever say to yourself, boy, that sounds like a science ball question? Um, sometimes I see things on TV and I'm like, oh, that could be something that they might ask in science school or, oh, I don't know about that. That's something I should look into. But, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're a disciplined young man and I, I, I like your curiosity and I like how you play. So good luck in the second half here. All right, Martin Luther King, it's time for your last nine questions. Let's get physical. Science, Popery, and Dateline if you're ready. Guys, here we go. Let's get physical for five points. The Muppet scientist, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, is assisted by a character named for one of these pieces of laboratory glassware with a characteristic spout. I would think a beaker. It could be like a bird, the character, so I think beaker would make sense. Um, I think beaker. Beaker? beaker is correct, yes indeed. Beaker gets you five points. For 15 points, kind of a long question, kind of an interesting question, but a fairly simple answer, I think. Trying to disprove that eating the candy known as pop rocks, which release carbon dioxide when you bite into them, and drinking Coca-Cola at the same time would cause a chemical reaction that would cause your stomach to explode. Mythbusters fill a harvested pig's stomach with both and discovered that while the stomach grew larger, it did not explode even though it contained acid from the soda and this natural digestive acid found in pig and human stomachs. Hydrofluoric acid, I've heard of that. Is it hydrochloric? Hydrofluoric, I don't think chloric, because okay. chlorine would not. What do you think, hydrofluoric? Hydrofluoric acid? Actually, Bailey had it right. It is hydrochloric acid. HCl is what we have in the stomach there. Nice try. Let's get to that last one. 25 points. It was Albert Einstein who proved that matter and this, which can come in various forms, are one and the same, one being transformed into the other. Matter um, and what? Can we have the question repeat something in our school's loudspeaker just came over and we couldn't hear? Absolutely. Thank you for letting us know that. The 25 point question, let's get physical, is it was Albert Einstein who proved that matter, M A T T E R, and this, which can come in various forms, are one and the same, one being transformed into the other. Energy, M equals, M equals MC squared. Energy? It is energy, yes. Our, our uh, nascent engineer got that one right. Good answer. Pope Reef for five points. While the fungus that appears on blue cheese is perfectly safe to eat, the same can't be said for the fungus of the same name that grows on your shower curtain. Mold, yeah. Mold. It is mold. Absolutely right. Disgusting stuff. For 15 points in potpourri. Something traveling at this speed, as did the Starship Enterprise in the Star Trek, Star Trek shows, is traveling at faster than the speed of light. Um, Something traveling at this kind of speed as did the Starship Enterprise in the Star Trek shows, is traveling faster than the speed of light. Super light? What's a prefix for light or something? Like supersonic is above the speed of sound. Super light would be super photon? Super like photic? I think you're going down the wrong path here. Uh, it's known as warp speed. W-A-R-P, warp speed. Let's try the 25-point question. During the pandemic, when people are around others who have contracted the virus, they're often asked to go into quarantine because of the potential infection and possible risk. But if someone is diagnosed as being infected and told to stay at home to avoid spreading it, they aren't 
in quarantine, they are being put into this situation. Isolation, you think? Okay, um, isolation? It is isolation, 25 points. You got it. Good answer. Last three questions. Here you go. Dateline for five. It is thought that polar bears in the Arctic and emperor penguins in the Antarctic will soon become quasi-extinct because at both poles, this is disappearing. Ice? I would think, yeah. Ice? Ice, right. Those ice flows and those ice sheets. Good. Five points. For 15 points, thanks to a 1754 discovery by a naval surgeon named James Lind, English ships were required to carry lemon juice on their ocean voyages to help prevent this disease. Scurvy. Scurvy because vitamin. Scurvy? It is scurvy. That's that good group work there because of the vitamin C. And last question of the game. In 1903, dateline for 25 points, in 1903, this man refused the Nobel Prize in physics unless his wife was also recognized for their joint work on radiation. Marie Curie was the wife and Marie Curie was the man. Absolutely right, Pierre Curie. And with that, you end a wonderful game. Two, six, five, nicely done, MLK. Will that get you into the finals? We'll find out in a minute. Great work, guys. All right, everybody's there waiting for the verdict. We've been playing all day, three games round robin. Our final tallies. Martin Luther King with 265 in both their first and second games with a total of 530 is the first of the finalists going to be competing for the championship. Congratulations to Martin Luther King. Coming in second and only 10 points separated the second and third place teams. Charles Carroll had 435 total. Robert Goddard had 445. So Robert Goddard, congratulations. You are the second of the finalists. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. You played splendidly today. I'm proud of you, your teachers, your coaches, your principals. I think I see Miss Womack down there. Dr. Womack, do we see you? It's so nice to have you here. Mr. Prez is up there and Miss Butler. And uh, I'm sorry that Miss Chaudhary is not here because she was with the morning game and the last game. So we will let her know how close they came, but they are champs as well. Thank you everybody for all you did, for spending the whole day with us. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did here. Thank you all for watching at home and we'll see you in the championship. Martin Luther King versus Robert Goddard. Don't miss it. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm.